This is a quick demonstration of Switchboard. It's a home automation system that I built some time ago to control uh, mostly uh, entertainment devices like my Smart TV, my PlayStation, my Roku, Xbox Media Center. I have a camera in the other room. It also checks other APIs including stocks, weather, and my Travis API to monitor build status and pull requests. It also has things like pushover notifications, Twilio, text messages, and text-to-speech. I have the speaker turned up really loud right now so you can hear it. Yeah. It's usually not that loud. Uh, the one thing that I use the most is probably the SmartThings integration. So here you can see that I have my living room lamp enabled. Uh, it's glowing because the lamp is on. And so here we will look and see that I have living room lamp is, is lit up on here. And if I click this, it's turned off, and then through WebSockets, it updates all interfaces. So here on my phone, I will click living room lamp. The lamp turns on, and then shortly thereafter, uh, the interface is updated on all devices. The way this works is I send a request to the API on SmartThings, it updates it, and then it grabs the state of the world, sends it down, and then it uh, sends it to all WebSockets. Um, if a light switch is hit or if a window is opened, it sends a local IP uh, command to the hub, and that hub then sends the command uh, through the local IP to uh, switchboard device, whatever it is, a computer. I have it running on Raspberry Pi. So you don't need any open ports to run um, this SmartThings dashboard. And so, uh, otherwise you just saw the motion detector go off because I waved my hand. It's here in my living room. Uh, so we can give a quick demonstration here that I'm kind of warm, so I'm going to turn my thermostat, we'll set this to 70. Uh, you notice it turned red because 7 is an illegal value because uh, that's way too cold. So here I'll hit the little snowflake button and it lights up because now the air conditioner is on. Um, and I think my nest is currently offline. So here you can see that the target temperature has been updated. Here that the thermostat is turned on. Um, my smoke detectors, everything's okay. Smoke, CO, and battery. Uh, the nest says that I'm home. I no longer have a leak because my air conditioner is turned on. Uh, this TV, this is grayed out because the TV is off. The PlayStation is grayed out because it is off. But as soon as I hit this blue button to power it on, it lights up. Um, the TV, I'm able to detect if most TVs, so this is a Samsung TV, but I also support uh, Panasonic, LG, and Hopefully soon sharp. So here the TV is starting to boot up. It doesn't have internet connectivity yet, so once it does, this will light up. And so there you saw that it lit up, so that means it's now ready to accept commands. So I can hit this link button, and that links the um, TV to the smart things or to the stereo. And now if I go to the PlayStation, I can control the PlayStation through uh, this interface on this computer. And of course, it's not limited to just the computer. Uh, you can use it here. This is kind of a simple app, a web app, rather. And you have tactile feedback for every button you press, so you know that you've hit a button. Um, this is the exact same code running on both places. Um, if you have a bigger screen, it tries to give you a little bit more information if you have a small screen. So here on uh, the Smart TV, I only have the kind of abbreviated buttons, but if I have a big interface here, you can see that I have the number pad and the record button, things that are less important to me. Uh, the Xbox Media Center is turned off currently. The Roku, I check it uh, every three to five seconds to figure out what applications are installed. You can watch them directly. Uh, for most of these things, you can do normal text input. So on the Smart TV here, go to, uh, let's open up a web browser, and then you can go here to enter text, and so here I'll type in the text, I want to search for puppies, and I'll click this, and the, the interface, I don't know if you can read it, has been updated, so it shows puppies up there, so um, you can change, change inputs, turn off, browse around, text input, and on the PlayStation, it's intended to be used as a media control device, so all these buttons are focused on that. I wouldn't really try playing games with it. 
Roku, I have all my apps, and I have normal controls and text input. Xbox Media Center right now is very simple. It just has basic commands and text input. Um, on the camera, I can browse around. So here, I can pan until and go to preset locations. I can arm the camera. Here you can see my dog at the corner of her ear in the corner. Goblin. Um, I can arm the camera, so if you are in a preset location, let's say over here, and I have uh, something that I want to arm, I can just click this arm button or I can have something issue that command. And it'll drive the camera to the preset location and turn on uh, the alarm system. And here I can disarm the camera. And so this works pretty well. Um, socks, you can set uh, highs and lows, and you can have push notifications, Twilio notifications, desktop notifications if something happens. I'll try and uh, simulate a desktop notification here. So here is simulating that I have gone away. So I have a presence tag here in the corner. I'm going to simulate that I've gone away. And so it'll tell you that I've gone away. You can also get desktop notifications that will tell you that. And of course, I can come back. And so it's super fast. Um, I have a bunch of other things I'm working on. Um, the li full list of compatible devices and services available on the, in the README. I'm updating it pretty much daily. And that is the gist of the switchboard controller. Thank you.